Portugal doesn't have a major rally star, so popular are the neighbouring Spaniards. There must be some huge support from Spain for you. A lot, a lot, particularly from my home area, from the north of Spain, La Coruña, they come a lot of friends, and I like it very much. Does that really spur you on when you're out there on the stages and you see the Spanish flags? Does that push you harder? Well, I get not only the Spanish flags, but the landscape is very similar to my hometown. In my hometown, it has been raining non-stop since September as well. I would like to be closer, but uh, obviously I'm happier because in the last uh, three stages we managed to come back a little bit. But we will see tomorrow what are the conditions and what is happening. The rain in Spain might fall mainly on the plain, but in Portugal it falls everywhere. But still a wave of Spanish fans came to cheer on Carlos Sainz. Sainz started day two as he finished day one, just wishing the rally was over. But his hopes of closing the gap to Mackinnon started badly on stage 11. He was a second slower than the Finn over the 24-kilometre stage. But the man on the move was Carlos Sainz. Winning stage 18 put El Matador within 13 seconds of Mackinnon. And when stage 19 was cancelled, it left the duel for the lead wide open with three stages to go on the final day. And it even felt gladiatorial as the contestants lined up at the start of the stage. The tension was tangible. Carlos Sainz seemed on good enough form, but Tommy Mackinnon was clearly in no mood to exchange pleasantries with his duelist. Hola. Morning, mate. There was clearly less pressure fighting for third. Lies the on Sainz, Mackinnon and the clock. First into the fray, the four-time world champion, Mackinnon. It's always harder defending the lead than fighting to take it, and Mackinnon knew it. Two minutes later, his adrenaline pumping as hard as the fuel into his engine, Sight pulled off the launch pad. In an instant, it was clear that Sight was on a mission to beat Mackinnon. The fans went wild. Split times at junctions down the stage showed that Sainz was on a massive attack. He was eating into Mackinnon's lead at almost half a second a kilometre. Up front, the pace was such that Mackinnon's tyres were now literally starting to melt. They were completely wrong for the conditions. Frustration was now visible on Mackinnon's face and in his driving. He'd been planning a big charge on stage 20 until it was cancelled, but the Finn is a fighter, and with the car on the ragged edge, he kept whipping it until it would go no faster. Sainz, meanwhile, had all the grip he needed. He got with a better tyre, and it worked like a dream. Mackinnon crossed the line, his time 18 minutes 32 and a half seconds. As Sainz cut the timing beam, his time came up 18 minutes 19.2 seconds, 13.3 seconds quicker. Sainz was now 0.3 of a second ahead of Mackinnon with one stage and 11 kilometres to go. I think it's, uh, it's uh, such a unique situation whereby I think there's only two drivers who have been consistently evenly matched the whole duration of the rally. And if you look at everybody else, you know, there's, there's no real sort of uh, consistency between any of them. So I think it's, it's been a rally of, uh, of many different parts, really. So a grandstand finish on the card. Sites edging ahead of Mackinnon by 0.3 of a second. Grunholm now looking safe in third from Burns. The grandstands might have been rocks, but this was no time to be sitting down. The rally of Portugal and the lead in the World Championship was going down to the wire. <laughs> Mackinnon knew his tyres were shot to pieces, but this was no time to be complaining. It was time for drastic action. <laughs> Sainz and Lewis Moyer didn't put a foot wrong, but Mackinnon cut the corners so much that he flung boulders into the path of the Ford. The stage had turned into a high-speed slalom. The way Mackinnon was driving, it wouldn't have mattered if he was on bicycle tyres. The Finn was flying. 
But in his desperation, out of sight, Sainz had slid wide. His back was now against the wall and he fought to regain his composure. But time was running out. But there was no time for nerves in the Mitsubishi number seven. All energies were in the search for speed. As the finish line loomed, co-driver Risto Madison Mackey looked like a kid who just survived the world's wildest roller coaster ride. Relieved that it was over. Now the agonizing wait for the time. Eight fifty-two three. Carlos is about a kilometre from the end now. The split times earlier in the stage said that Sainz was off the pace, but still there was enough of the stage left to make a difference. Sainz risked everything. It would be better to crash in search of ten points than slow down for six. But would it be enough? The fans went quiet. Nine oh one two. No, and not by a long way. Nine seconds. Sainz was slower than Mackinnon. Mackinnon was the winner. What a one! How does it feel to have won your one hundredth World Rally start? Nobody's done it before. It's it's incredible feeling. It's incredible, especially in this kind of weekend. It's been so difficult weekend. I have uh, been trying uh, la last three years. I haven't got any result here. Very bad performance. Very bad results. And uh, and finally we got the lead from the start. And we 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 were leading most of the time. And until uh, <laughs> yeah, last night, Carlos started to start to start to pushing hard. And and uh, so. It was maximum. Today we started really taking high risk in first stage. We managed to come back to, to Tommy and uh, we continue in the last stage. Maybe pushing a little bit too hard at the beginning, coming wide a couple of times, and then Tommy was really cutting every single van and putting hu huge stones on the road. And uh, I have to slow down in two or three places because it was really, really big stones. I couldn't pass over, so I have to, to go out of the line. Have you ever done a more difficult rally? Never in my life. I think the conditions were terrible, awful. Uh, I've never seen anything. I mean, sometimes we did the stages with fog and and rain and mud, but so many altogether continuously never.